You're listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. I'm John Stonge, and today we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And we'll be reading from the New Living Translation. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and from our brother Sosthenes. I am writing to God's church in Corinth, to you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus, just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always thank my God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you, now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way, with all of your eloquent words and all of your knowledge. This confirms that what I told you about Christ is true. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end, so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this, for he is faithful to do what he says, and he has invited you into partnership with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church, Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. For some members of Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels, my dear brothers and sisters. Some of you are saying, I am a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos, or I follow Peter, or I follow only Christ. Has Christ been divided into factions? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, for now no one can say they were baptized in my name. Oh yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus, but I don't remember baptizing anyone else. For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news, and not with clever speech, for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. As the scriptures say, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven and it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended, and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. 
God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the privilege that it is to be able to read it together today and study it and learn more about you. And Lord, we recognize that the church at Corinth was divided over petty issues. It seems that they were idolizing some of their teachers and leaders. And we'll see as we go through this book that there were a variety of other issues that were dividing this church as well. But Lord, you haven't called us to be needlessly divided over trivial things. You've called us to be united, and you want us to be united under the banner of the truth of your gospel. So Lord, we pray that when worldliness infects our thinking, and when a worldly perspective negatively impacts the way that we treat each other, that you would intervene, that you remind us that we have nothing in ourselves to boast and brag about, that through Christ we have been made right with you. You've made us pure and holy, and you freed us from sin, and you invite us and encourage us and implore us not to go back to what you freed us from. So we're grateful for this freedom, we're grateful for your love, and we're grateful for your presence with us today. And we commit ourselves to you now, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. Once a week, typically on Tuesdays, we email our listeners a brief devotional and a word of encouragement through our newsletter. If you'd like to start receiving our newsletter in your inbox, please visit DesireJesus.com and click on the newsletter link to sign up. Thanks again for listening, and have a wonderful day.